Okay, to start out here, I went ahead and launched my terminal. Now, you may notice this terminal may not look quite like your terminal. That's because I'm using a patch called Terminator. Now, if you're on KDE, it's called KConsole. If it's uh, you're on GNOME, it's called Terminal uh, or GNOME-Terminal. There's a lot of different terminals out there. I always install Terminator no matter what distribution I'm on. It gives me the ability to do kind of really neat things such as going horizontal or I can go ahead and split. And what this does when you see this, it's called terminal multiplexer. It means you can launch multiple things, be doing many things at once. So let's say I have this. Oh, wait, I don't actually have that installed. So uh, I'm using Pac-Man for my package manager, uh, but you can do whatever you want. If it's apt-get, if you're running a Debian install, hey, that's you know, whatever it is. So what I did right there is just started a command or just give you an idea of what it looks like when you're bouncing around in this. So you can do multiple things and go, hey, I'm installing a package up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bounce over to this window and do something else. Uh, please note, you know, if you are doing package installs, you do have to wait for one window to finish before you can do another one because they'll conflict. Uh, but that is terminal multiplexing or basically multiple tiles in a terminal. Uh, so uh, the basis here is Terminator is I really like it. All the other terminals usually have some version of this. If you're running on server though, and you don't have a GUI or you're unable to do Terminator, I highly recommend Tmux. It was kind of like the very first terminal multiplexer. So that is Tmux and it is really good. But uh, that is it for the actual basis or the start of terminal and getting it up and going. So I'm just gonna go ahead and exit these and we're gonna just stick with the one window today. I just wanted to show that out of the get go, just kind of demystify that. Uh, the other things that you might've noticed is tab completion. And I wanted to go into that real fast. So whenever you're typing something uh, in, let's say you're going terminate and you can type tab and it actually fills in all the different things. And if you press it a couple times, it'll give you all the different options. So whenever you see me doing things in terminal and you're like, well, how did he type that so fast? It's because I'm using tab to complete what I'm doing. So just know that and that's a really good thing to know in terminal starting off. So now that you understand how to launch your terminal, how to do different windows in terminal, uh, and I kind of briefed, briefly went over that, and you know, I highly recommend going in deep, and once you get to the end of this, you'll understand how to find all this stuff quickly without having to sit on a web page reading forever. So we open our terminal, we have tab completion, let's talk about the sudo command. Now sudo is just super user. So sudo, and then you can type whatever it is, and it gives you elevated privileges or is able to run that as super user. And I'm gonna link up on the very top there, uh, sudo explained, and it's an entire like 10 minute video about sudo in itself. But for today's video, just know when you do sudo in a command, it elevates your user to run the command. And if you do sudo su, we are now running as the root user. So whatever command we run, it will be run as root. Just know that if you're doing installations and you're as root, your regular user won't have permissions to do that. Or if you're making directories as the root user, it'll be assigned to root. That's very important because if we look in our home directory, if I go make directory root only, and I'm gonna go ahead and do ls, ls is your listing command mkdr is actually making the directories so uh now we made that directory but what are the permissions on it we just expand our ls command or our listing command ls dash al this is all files even the hidden ones and if we look on here you'll see the root only uh, right yeah you'll see root only and you'll notice it's not there. So as my user, let me go ahead and pull up my file explorer here. And you'll see that root only is right there, but it's got this lock. So if I go to create, I can't create a new folder. I can't do anything with this folder because it was created as root. So very important to know. That's why you don't want to stay in root. Many noobs always do that and for today i'm going to stay in root just so i can run all these commands but uh, no you don't want to stay in root with sudo su 
just remember SU switch user. So if I hit exit, it exits out of that. And I'm back as running as my user that I've logged in as. So uh, if I wanted to remove that, I'd have to do sudo remove directory. And for directories, you need to do a capital R and I like to do F for force. So R, the capital R is recursive, F for force, root, and let's see what we got only. And now if we do a listing, you'll notice that root command's gone. So real fast, I went over sudo, switch user, exit, ls for that. Uh, now, one thing I did with the ls-a, uh, ls-al, let me go ahead and pull this back up. You'll notice we didn't see all these, but let's say we needed something above H's and we can't see it and we can't scroll up. Let's say that scroll bar in your mouse isn't, isn't working for whatever reason or you're in just actual terminal where you don't have access to a mouse. You can do what's called the more command. So let's do ls-al and then the pipe symbol. Now the pipe symbol is above the inner key, so you hold shift and press that key above the inner key and type more. Now you'll see here, it's kind of stops, and if we hit arrow key down, it just does one at a time. If we hit space bar, it does a whole page. So once it's done, you can just simply hold shift and hit ZZ and just type that two times. So it's two capital Z's and it exits out of the more command. Uh, so it's really good to use, especially when you're in terminal and you don't know what to do. So we know how to remove directories, make directories, remove files. You can, instead of doing the RM, let's say, let's, let's say we wanted to remove a file. So let's go into my downloads folder. I'm sure there's a bunch of crap here. So let's say I wanted to remove fail dash stamp. I could just go RM, and it is case sensitive, so just remember that, capital F, A, L, and then I just hit tab to autocomplete, and it removes that file. We'll do an LS again, boom, that file's gone. Now, let's say I wanted to delete GIMP scripts. Now, I'm gonna do it incorrectly just to show you what happens. It says, hey, this is a directory, what the heck? So let's do RM dash capital R for recursive, and F for force, and we'll do GIMP scripts. GIMP scripts is now gone. And that's it. We'll go ahead and clean up the rest of this. And you see how easy it is just to fly through this and get rid of these files using the RM command. Now, let's say we want to move a file. So let's go into images and see what's in there. Oh, okay, so quite a bit of stuff. So what we can do is uh, move into that. now. One thing I just missed here is CD, so change directory is CD, so change directory images. To go back, you do CD dot dot. So you kind of see the dot dot, just think of it goes back. And let's say you just get completely buried in here, you don't even know where you are. There's a really good command that you should always remember to use, and that is PWD. Okay, so it tells you the path we're on so uh, pwd or you know that's kind of you just have to remember that command if you ever get lost but let's say you're in root and you're way out in the middle of nowhere and you're like how do i get back to my home directory you can always do cd tiddly symbol now that's above the tab in the top left and it'll go right back to there so let's go pwd and go hey where am i ah, i'm home titus and to get to root and just go forward like that so that's how the kind of you get around in linux terminal uh, using all that cd space there's always a space after cd so just remember that so we're going to go back to the home directory we're going to move this images so let's go back into images oh that was in their downloads images so you can actually do multiple steps through just by using that tab so remember start with uh, the down tab and then the forward and then just start typing those in. So we're, we're all the way back here. And I'm just going to PWD just show you. So we're going to move the sky. Move. Or let's copy it. So we can move with M MV. Or if we don't want to uh, just move the file, we can do CP for copy. MV, move, 
cp copy so let's move sky so we're going to move this to my dropbox folder so that is actually located under my home folder so i'm going to use the tidly and then forward slash dropbox and i like to put this in photoshop and then i believe stock so this is kind of really going advanced now you see how i'm moving this file all the way to my home directory into dropbox to photo and it just moves that file so uh it's gone it's over there so if i go back into the stock which there's a ton of stock photos that i'm always downloading for thumbnails and other things um, but that's the basis of moving copying listings and changing directories going over pretty fast here but i want to get through this content just so you can kind of get a good feel so the next up let's say you download an executable script now if you see this fix cam i i wrote this script which i'm going to nano into it which is my text editor um, i highly recommend you don't use vim especially starting out if you're not used to it it's very awkward so uh, from nano here you can kind of see everything i do to make my 50 dollars webcam actually look decent it still looks yeah but it looks a lot better than it does from stock i'd change all these things but i need to go ahead and run this command so if i try fix cam that that doesn't work so how do i run that script you go dot forward slash fix cam two ah there we go and it, it went ahead and pushed that or ran that script which is pretty cool now there was some errors there unknown control focus auto probably because i just got on manjaro and i need to install that package that was in that script now let's say i wanted to know what was inside that fix cam but i didn't want to use my text editor to get in like nano well you can just do cat or think of it as like catalog and fix cam to sh and it just prints all that out i'm still in my shell and it just kind of just showed me what all was in that camera script and i'm like oh hey it's probably this 4l2 dash ctl or what not that command i need to get so i could easily query that with my package manager and download those packages so that's how you would do it but let's say you got this all command and we're looking at the fix cam up here actually let's do ls um dash all listing or actually long listing is what i'm looking for all right i left out the a that hides all the things now one thing about directories and files in in linux is the dot hides the file so if you don't want to see that you just want a long listing ls space dash l will just give you all the regular files that and in all those system files are hidden or all those things with a dot before it are hidden so uh, we look here and you'll see that the executable commands there but let's say uh, that that was not the case so let's remove the executable can and let's go ahead and run that long listing again now if I tried to run that script you'll notice I can't because there's no executable command and I, I'm going to go ahead and link up top permissions explained again that's like a five to ten minute video explaining all these permissions but just know that chmod is very powerful for adding many of these permissions that you need for uh to do those types of things so if you look I can now run it again so also ownership let's say you make a directory and you want other people to own that thing so uh let's make a test and i do ls uh all right and you'll see the test directory there it's under titus titus well you can do chown titus users test and then uh it's not permitting me because i'm not running as a super user so i can go back into this and just type sudo before this to run and let's do a listing command again and you'll notice that the second one here um, where it says users well that was actually titus titus and now it's titus users but i could even change it most times when you're on running on your super user it'll make it as root and you need to go assign it to your user and it would usually be your user and then users as the group but or you can just do your user for both 
the name and the group, but that's just ownership. And again, watch that video up there for permissions. It really goes into that. So let's say you're you're going, going, hey, I remember that RM command to remove things, but I can't quite remember what all the extra syntax was. What was that? Dash RF or whatever. You can go dash dash help. And you're like, okay, what do I have? And then you're like, oh, you know what? Can't see that. So let's let's just go again dash help but remember that pipe symbol and more and then we can kind of just flip through this so dash f is force um dash r is recursive ah remove empty directories is dash d that's a new one dash v explain exactly what's being done when it's being done and then it gives you the examples below that so that's it so to get out of the more remember shift zz and we're out so that's a really good command, the dash dash help. So you remember that helps you. But let's say you really need to study this up and that's just not enough. You can do what's called the manual command. Man and then RM. And then it gives you the full listing from like the Linux Bible and says, hey, this is everything. And you can come through here and go up and back and down. And then once you're ready, just hit Q to quit. So manual's a very good command too, helps just like a quick access, but if there's a lot to that command, you might use manual instead. Um, now, if you look back here, it's kind of hard to read like this. I don't particularly like this, so a little pro tip I like to do is uh, something called a pager most. So um, let me see, I don't think I actually have this package installed, so I'm gonna install it real fast. So what I'm gonna do here is change the colors and things in it. There's a, a system variable called pager. So if I do an export pager equals most from this package, and then let's go back and run that manual. And it kind of adds a little flair. You don't have to do this. I just kind of want to show it. If you're a vet watching this, this is kind of like a pro tip that you can easily, it's so much more readable with that, that most command or that most package installed and changing the environment variable using export pager command. Um, and I'll put all this down in the description so you guys can easily reference all these things. Uh, I just wanted to throw this out here today and kind of get this going for part one. Part two, I'm gonna really start diving down and kind of showing you how a systems administrator would work in terminal and show you more of the higher level commands, at least uh, get you into some other things.